Hello and welcome to this episode of The Clever Craftsman. My name's Aaron, and I'm sitting here with the boat that Brody and I have raced in our NAS boat racing program the last two seasons. NAS boat stands for the National Association of String Trimmer Boat Racing. And as you can tell, it's a little bit battered and broken, and we've got some ideas we're gonna do to improve it. So this is gonna be uh, disassembled, and I'll show you in another episode what we're gonna do with this haul. I'll show you what Brody has decided we're gonna do with it. And uh, we're gonna build a new one. We're gonna build a new one for me to run and a new one for Brody to run, and maybe even Banks. We'll see if he can do it. Uh, so I wanna show you, I get a lot of questions about how to set up a boat for NAS boat and uh, how, to, how to make everything work. And so I wanna show you, before I take this boat apart, I wanna show you kind of what we uh, do and how we set them up. Four basic uh, components or areas you need to think about. The first is the hull, and then the engine, the electronics, and the hardware. So let me start with the hull. So in NAS boat, we encourage creativity. We want everyone to use their, use their brains and think outside the box a little bit, but the rules do state that it must be a flat bottom boat. That means flat right across here. Not a V bottom, like a traditional runabout boat, or a tunnel hull. So the idea for us having flat bottom boats is that they're simple to build. We want these to be easy for anyone to make. Uh, let me start by showing you um, the dimensions that we have found that work good. I got my tape measure here. This boat is about 13 inches wide. I think the next one that we build here at uh, Clever Craftsman Racing is gonna be 14 or 15 inches wide, just to make it a little more stable when we're uh, out there running and the waves are getting kind of big. The other thing here is the length. So this boat's about 42 inches long. I think we're gonna go a couple inches longer. It's nice to stay under 48 because you can get uh, a bottom out of a sheet of plywood and a side, which is kind of nice. And then depth, depth of the boat right here. This one's about five inches, pretty much you know, just shy of five inches. We're gonna stay similar to that. I like them to not be too deep because we run air-cooled weed eaters and I like the engine to stick out. It helps to keep the engine cool. Um, so I'm gonna take the hood off here and kind of show you how the hull was made. All right, I got the screws out. This piece is broken a little bit. This we just made a, a windshield look so that it looks cool. And then the front uh, hood piece here comes off. We just use little screws in each corner to attach them. And uh, inside the boat, you can see is basically made of four pieces of wood. You got two sides, you got your transom in the back, and then your bottom that just runs down like this. So this one's made out of uh, poplar that I had planed down to be about 5 16 thick. Uh, the back is a little thicker. You want your transom nice and sturdy so you can screw things to it and you don't want this breaking loose. And then the bottom is made out of quarter inch plywood and it just bends right up. When you're constructing the hull, you wanna use Gorilla Glue. So this boat had a little incident where uh, <clears throat> Banks was learning to drive uh, last summer and hit the dock. And so we patched it with this piece of wood and a bunch of Gorilla Glue. Uh, but you can kind of see back here what, what the Gorilla Glue looks like in the corner. It makes like a nice weld kind of bead. Um, I've got other videos where we're actually building hulls. You can check those that out. That gets us to the second item on the list, the engine. You want an engine that just purrs like a little kitten. Well, kind of. So this is a uh, Echo Weed Eater. This one is uh, 21 cc's. People always ask me what, what makes a good uh, Weed Eater engine to use. And my answer is one that has the pull start on the back and not on the front. And the reason for that is you usually find the more industrial type weed eaters, like your Echoes, your Steels, your Husqvarna's, those types, have the pull rope on the back because there's a, there's a bearing here and a bearing here, and things are just made better. They're more sturdy. Some of the, like the Home Lights, the Weed Eater, the green branded ones, uh, have the pull rope in the back, and they're just not as, not as durable. It's not that they won't work, they're just not as durable as what I've found. The other thing I like to do is find one that has the throttle to where it pulls from the top because it makes it easy to hook up your servos when it comes time to do that. Um, it's nice to have one that has a primer bulb, makes it easier to start. Also, these little Echoes, what I like about them is I can buy the uh, brand new carburetor on Amazon for like $10. 
So if I've got a dirty carburetor, it's easy just to throw another one on it. Um, you basically want to find an engine that's durable and dependable, easy to start, because these boats are going to run, uh, you know, they're going to run in the 20 mile an hour range. You know, nothing crazy. We're not running Zenoa racing engines in these. The idea here is cheap and simple so that kids can make them. The hull is simple. The engine is cheap. So this is, you know, something somebody was throwing away. I do have a, a tuned exhaust pipe on here. Uh, my nephew Landon has the exact same hull, the exact same engine with a regular can muffler. This one goes like one mile an hour faster. So it really doesn't make that much difference in a race. This is just something I had laying around. It sounds really cool. It looks cool because the tip sticks out the back. Uh, this rudder has the water pickup and the uh, being an air-cooled engine, you don't really need that, but this water line runs up and cools this little exhaust manifold that I had found somewhere that just happened to bolt up to this Echo. I had to hollow it out a little bit. Next item on the list is the electronics. So if you get in contact with me, if you're local and you are putting together an ass boat boat to run with us, this is what I have been selling the kids that are doing these. Uh, I buy these on Amazon. This is the transmitter and receiver. These are like $38 on Amazon. And this is a kit of two servos. These things are quite powerful. They've been really durable, really good. There again, they're like $38. So the whole set right there is about, uh, what would that be, $76? You can get into something fancier like this Fatuba. You know, there's all kinds of name brand Fatuba or JR um, systems out there. But, you know, for what we're doing, this is simple and easy. If you happen to have one of these or you're wanting to run some uh, other boats with the same controller, these are nice because you can program more than one boat to run off the controller. This controller is just gonna do one boat model at a time. All right, so let me show you how the electronics are actually hooked up. So the receiver is this little box right here. You plug in uh, power to it. So you use a battery pack and a switch. And then uh, this is the antenna that receives the signal. And then you plug two servos in. You got one for steering and one for throttle. And it's just that easy. Uh, this little box to put the electronics in, I buy these on Amazon. It's, uh, it's nice because it opens very easily with a latch and it's watertight. No matter what you do, you want to have your electronics in a watertight box because you will flip the boat. If you run it long enough, you will flip it. <laughs> The rudder here on the back that does the steering is connected with a solid rod. I have a little rubber boot on there to seal it up. I buy those from Zip Kits. Check out their website, zipkits.com. They're a sponsor of NAS Boat. Uh, up here on the throttle, I use a flexible cable running through a little plastic tube that runs up here to the carburetor. And you can see it just like that. Pulls it and releases it. Those are the two servos. So you'll hear these referred to as channels. So on boats, uh, it's just two channels, one for rudder, one for throttle. Airplanes, you might have three or four or five, and uh, cars sometimes have two or three. But uh, that's, that's the basics of it. This is a little tachometer. That's not anything you have to have. I just had that in there for fun, testing different propellers. So the basics of the electronics are the transmitter that you hold in your hand, the receiver, the power source, and servos. The next item of business and the last item on this list is hardware. So by hardware, what I mean is the rudder, the propeller, which is a little dinged up here. <clears throat> Ready? <laughs> and then uh, on the bottom, we have the keel, and then there's the prop shaft that gives the power from the engine to the propeller. So I get a lot of questions about that prop shaft. So what we're doing here, being that we're using weed eaters, uh, we actually are just taking out the flexible cable that comes in the weed eater. We're going to the hardware store and buying a piece of solid quarter inch metal dowel rod. And uh, the weed eater will have a square hole up here on the end. So you just grind it square on the end and you run it out the back. And then you tap a little thread on there to put this nut on. And in front of the nut, you've got this thing. It's called a drive dog, which engages with the propeller and then a nut to hold the propeller on. We do uh, solid shafts on these because it's simple. You don't have to do that in NASPO. You can run a flex shaft. If you look at um, professionally made RC boats that these guys are making and running, 
they're running a curved shaft. So it would start here and go like this and then curve up and in. It's just a little more complicated to do that. You need a strut piece on the back to hold this end of it. And you need a, a special bought uh, flexible cable. You can try to use the one that comes with the weed eater. I've done that, it's a little tricky. Everything is attaching it to a weed eater can be a little tricky because these are just square on the end. This, you can see how I did it. This is just a piece of metal tubing that I had. Uh, and then on the end, there is a brass bushing, there you can kind of see it, that I dimpled to hold in place and the quarter inch shaft just fits in there. And that's how this one's running. So along with hardware, we need to talk about engine placement and a little bit of engineering on these boats. This is the shape of keel that I have found to work best, this size and shape. It's a little loosey goosey because uh, as you can tell, it gets a little rough out there. Hence why we're starting over with a new hull. This is just a keel that I made. It's about three inches tall, inch and a half wide, and it's uh, just screwed to the bottom. It's nice and sharp, so it cuts through. But what you wanna do is you wanna have your engine about in the center of the boat. Maybe, uh, it's all about finding that center of gravity. So this, with being a straight shaft, we want the angle of that shaft to be as flat as possible so we get the most direct drive as the propeller pushes it forward. So I've got my engine probably plenty far forward as far as weight goes, but I was trying to get my shaft flatter. Then when you put your keel in on the bottom, you wanna put your keel right under the center of gravity. So in my case, it's right under the engine here. Now we can talk rudders a little bit. I've got mine offset. Um, these boats, we, RC boats, pretty much just turn to the right. All the RC boat racing you see in, in the ass boat racing that we do, we turn to the right. That's because of the way the propeller spins. It's going like this. And so it's taking the back of the boat this way. So they just automatically turn right way better than they turn left. So I offset my rudders to the right. In my mind, that kind of helps it to make that turn because you got the drag over here. Um, some guys will put the rudder right behind the propeller. That's okay. Uh, the biggest thing that I look at is the height of it. So when the boat's going full speed, you can picture the boat is on top of the water. So it's right here with the bottom of the boat. So you can see my propeller just breaks the surface of the water. If my finger was the surface of the water at full speed, the tip of the propeller is just breaking the water. You don't want to bury it too deep and you don't want too much sticking out because it'll slip. You want to go kind of just right for the surface of the water. And then the rudder, uh, I actually had this one plenty low, so I cut a little off the bottom, but that's just something you can kind of experiment with depending on the rudder you're using uh, as to how deep you want it. You don't want it too deep because it creates too much drag, but you don't want it too shallow because you won't have enough bite to turn well. So it just kind of depends on the size of your boat and what all you got going on. That pretty much sums up the basics of building a NAS boat to race with us. Uh, if you're local to Ohio and you want to race with us, you can find us on Facebook. That's kind of how we get everybody corralled together and plan out when we're doing it. We race through the summer, three or four races a year. If you're not local to Ohio, there's other people on the Facebook page. Uh, if you just go to search for NAS boat, you'll find us. Look for pictures of these little guys running around. Right here is the NAS boat Facebook page. So if you find this picture and uh, the word NASPA, you can just search for this. And these are uh, people from all over the world here that have joined in on the fun. We're local here in Ohio, but uh, you can see boats that other people are putting together. Flat bottom, weed eater powered boats. They're sharing ideas and uh, just in general uh, having some fun with RC boats. And uh, all of us are on there that do it. There's some guys in Michigan that have been putting these together. I know there's a guy in uh, Florida and a couple in Texas. It's been kind of fun to see it grow. We would like to get these boats running all over the country and have kids and uh, young men playing around with experimenting with uh, boats and doing a little engineering, having some fun. And you know, the things I've pointed out here, you may find something that works better. These are just some ideas to get you started uh, on size, layout, engine, how to do the hardware and the electronics. Uh, we just want to see everyone be successful and have a have a fun boat that runs good. Thanks for watching. And I mentioned earlier in the video zip kits. So right here it is zipkits.com. This is a place where we've been buying all of our parts to make the hardware parts of the NAS boats. And if you just come up here to the search bar and put in NAS boat, they recently came on board with a hardware set just for us. So thank you 
zip kits for partnering with NAS Boat. If you guys are putting together one of these, go check them out. Or even if you're just working on a regular RC boat, the guys over at Zip Kits are great to work with and have all kinds of hardware.